L21. God damn it. Oh. Good morning. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is Tuesday, May 17th, 2022. And I'd like to give a special shout out to my amazing and beautiful wife. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And thank you for putting up with my shit. Really appreciate it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, we are heading to a service call in Oceanside, New York. We installed this Ream Prestige system about 10 years ago after Hurricane Sandy. And we also did a lot of other work in this house. We did the boiler, we did bathrooms, we, sadly, our house was inundated with floodwaters. It was not pretty. And um, the whole neighborhood got wiped out and she's one of the many houses we worked on. But she's calling because she has no central air conditioning. It's not working. And we haven't done a tune-up yet this year, but we're gonna go there and fix her up. All right, guys, stay tuned. Let's get going. Now, one of the things I like to do, especially when first greeting a customer, and this should be standard practice, when you're standing at the front door, you wanna be a step down and you wanna be like on a 45 degree angle to the door. If you're like this, right, right against that front door, you kinda like, become very intrusive, you know? And it's like, take a step back, a step down, and be in a little bit of an angle. See? Step down, a little bit of an angle, and we're gonna say hi. Hi, hero. What? Hi, hero. My hero? <laughs> I'm just doing my job. Good morning. Oh, I see your cape. I see your cape. Good morning. <laughs> How are you, dear? I'm fine, thank you. I, I must, I, you know thank what came you. in the mail yesterday? And I can't thank you enough. You wrote a letter. Yeah to the South Carolina uh, Building right. Commission. Right. Thank you so much, the recommendation letter. I really, it really appreciate it. It was very thoughtful and you, you went overboard. I didn't go overboard, but it's <laughs> plenty, plenty awesome. But that's how I felt. I tried to reel it back. I tried to make it housewifey and not businessy. <laughs> <laughs> But thank you. And, oh, if you want anything changed, tell nope, me. No, nope, it's, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. No, 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 it's perfect. Okay. Right from the heart. It, it was, I was only afraid that you were going to move. But no, I'm not moving. Me, you're not moving. No, 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 no I'm not moving. I, I, I wouldn't leave you. Terrified me. I wouldn't leave you. Absolutely terrified me. No, my goal is to conquer the East Coast. Anything I can do, that's fine. Thank you. My manicurist is going to call you. Don't worry about it. You saw well, my I like house. my socks, so it's like red socks. Nice I like socks. colors, you know. Okay. You know, you can be right. masculine and still wear my colored socks. My grandson wears two different socks. Very interesting, <laughs> different animals, different. It's great. I have to check his socks every time he comes. But you <laughs> saw my house when it was a saltwater swimming pool, so don't yes. worry about a few steps. Oh, but now it's beautiful. Well. <laughs> Is the air conditioning broken? Yeah. Um, so what happens when you turn it on? Nothing? I get the fan. But no cooling. But no cooling. No cool air comes out. The fan Just warm air? No, it fe I think it feels cool in the den. I'll feel a little coolness. It okay. doesn't make the temperature go down, but the breeze does go. Oh, but the fan is on and the yeah, filter is clean. Fan is on. And the filter is clean. Let's double check if it's clean. Uh, yeah, it's clean. Let's look at the Clean unit. Most, like, put it I can't take the How's your wrist? Didn't you have like, what did you break? Yeah, your wrist? I broke my wrist two toes. And when I fell, I'm so sorry. I broke two toes and oh, I, I'm I sorry. really damaged my knee. So I can't go down the steps. So I can't take the things out of there. I'm so it's fine. Sorry. It's fine. No worries. No worries. I'm just going to take a peek. Okay. There's the condensate pump. Let's see why the outdoor unit isn't going on. It's a tight spot here. The ream, the little compact one, RBHP, runs on 110 volts. All right, here it is. 
the Ring Prestige RAPM. Back in the days we installed the filter dryers outside. I don't do that anymore. So I know there's a control board in here. Let me get my tool bag and hopefully we're not on uh, error 27, which is low pressure. All right. My primary go-to tool bag is the Vito, the Pro Pack. This is the TP XXL. And I got a lot of stuff in here. Um, and I got a full description of everything that's in here, exception of this, in the description box. So, if you, and I even got my HIK Micro B20 thermal imaging camera in there, right? I got my digital manometer, my field piece in there. I have my portable carbon monoxide alarm, my meter, a whole bunch of good stuff, you know? Switcheroo. This is where it went. Peter, god damn you, Peter. I just bought a new one of these, right? because it wasn't where it normally is, which is there. And now look, it's in there. Ah, oh, damn it, Peter. All right, let's get the uh, the quarter inch. Oh, no, I was wrong. Let's get the 5 sixteenths. See, that's a quarter inch. I knew I wasn't retarded. And let's go see what's going on in here. Just take a quick little visual of the condensing coil. Not terrible, but we were here last year, and this is one year's worth of dirt. You know, we're smack up against the grass on a pad, right? We have good clearance there. It's about 10 inches there. So, the moment of truth. The uh, Ream Prestige, back in the days, they had this ICC board, right? And here's all the error codes. And we don't want it to be 27, which is abnormally low or no line voltage. Oh, no, sorry, 23. 23, oh, 21, sorry, 21. <laughs> sorry, let's see. L21, god damn it. All right, L21 is low refrigerant pressure. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, that she's got a leak. Now, this system is manufactured 10 years ago, exactly 10 years. There goes our warranty. That really sucks. Actually, no. The manufacture date was June 2012. So if there's a 10 year warranty on the condenser, I wonder what the warranty is on the air handler evaporator coil that rbhp and guess what it's probably gonna be outside of warranty so first things we're gonna do we're gonna grab the testos and we're gonna check our pressures all right i got my testo hooked up these are 557s i don't remember yep the 557s and we have pressure in the system so let's see Reset that again. We may have a defective pressure switch. Interesting. All right, let's pull power. This thing will die. I could have swore there was a reset switch on this thing, but I guess I was mistaken. Okay. So let's put that back in. Okay. And we'll little C. All right. Now it's gonna do a compressor um, wait period, a, pr a compressor start delay. Little C flashing, let me show you. Little C, see, Y1, first stage or second stage operation, unit operation. When it flashes, uh, we're in that delay mode. So, now another thing with the low pressure switch, the, um, the low pressure condition is that if the filter was dirty and the system froze up, then we're also going to get that lockout of L21. So as you saw, the filter was clean in there. And I didn't ask her if she just changed it. I don't think she did. But maybe the it was intermittent failure with the indoor blower. But something, 
because I got pressure in there and it's it's 63 degrees right so a little bit low on that temperature which normally reads the ambient temperature of the outdoor condition but let's see what happens when this bad boy starts up we may be slightly undercharged uh, and that's all again all due to a leak or lack of proper charge while I'm waiting for a little seat to go away and stop flashing, I hooked up my uh, wireless Testo 115s. This is gonna measure the temperature of the suction and liquid line. We do have a slight variation there, which is kind of interesting, in temperature. All right, slight variation in temperature. I wonder why. Still flashing little C. Sure, that's nice and clean. Okay, capacitor. Just gotta wait now and see. Okay, yeah, we, we have power. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an effing idiot. Yeah. We are undercharged. It's my uh, suction pressure, 30 PSI with a saturation temperature of 12 degrees, negative 12 degrees. So we definitely have a leak in the system. I'm just gonna pull that, All right? I don't want it to go off an error again. And this is 24 volts and we have Y1 and Y2 if it was wired and then common because this control board gets uh, 24 volts for operation All right, let's talk about refrigerant leaks. I have a page on my invoice um, Air conditioning invoice that outlines Basically, it's like a disclaimer, but it's all about liability at the end of the day, but it, it forces the technician myself included to make the customer aware of options when there is a system refrigerant leak. And uh, I'm gonna show it to you real quick, so feel free to pause. And if you wanna use it for your own business, feel free. If you want the PDF, feel free to email me, mike at mikeypipes.com. But it basically outlines uh, a few things, and let's go over it right now, real quick. As you can see, this page applies to systems needing refrigerant. And it gives you basically a little summary there. Your system is low on refrigerant. There is a leak in the system. The leak will not go away. It will only get worse. And you have five options. A, number one, do nothing. Yep, you can do nothing. <laughs> and there's a section dedicated to that. Number two, we can add refrigerant. And there's a section dedicated, dedicated to that as well. Number three, we can attempt to repair the leak with a sealant. There's a section on that. Number four, we can perform a leak search and then repair or replace the leaking part. And that's that section right there. And number five, replace the entire system, which is right there. Okay, so let's go head on inside. We'll explain the diagnosis to my customer and see how she wants to proceed. Now, a lot of you are going to say, listen, Mikey Pipes, the system is 10 years old and, you know, find the leak. Except that labor is one of the most expensive components of the service call and the repair. So... I'm not gonna sell her a new system, absolutely not, unless she really wants that, but um, the objective here is to make the problem go away. And the only way it's gonna go away, permanently, until another leak develops, is replacing that component or making the repair of that component. So one of the first things you're gonna look for is, you see if you see any oil residue around you know, connections, around fittings and things like that. But based on my experience, and you guys could back me up on this who are in the HVAC industry, you guys know that Ream has just, and an, an, they inherit leaks from birth. Kind of like Navian. You know, Navian leaks from day one. I'm not saying Ream does, but they have a problem. And back in the days, about, you know, eight, nine, ten years ago, there was a class action lawsuit against Ream because evaporator coil, evaporator coils leaked. And one, in my particular case, brand new out of the box, and the next day I was up in the attic replacing the evaporator coil. So I guess kind of like Navian, because those South Koreans don't know how to make great products for us Americans. So let me stop and, hey, BDK, sit on this and rotate. I will give you the diagnosis. Oh, God. What? <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea to sit down. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so the system is not cooling because it's, the unit is not coming on outside. The unit is not coming on outside because it senses a low pressure condition. And what that means is there's not enough refrigerant in the system, so when it runs, you know, the pressures get lower, and then there's sensors inside that sense that. Uh, basically, it's designed, these sensors are designed to protect the system, the compressor, right. and things like that. Right. What this means is you have a leak. Okay. Um, and what do we do? Okay, so there's, there's five options. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you all five of them, but I'll, whatever. You tell me what you would do if it was yours. Well, let me give you the five options first. Okay. So option number one, yeah. you, you do nothing. You can't do nothing because you have no air conditioning. Right. Okay. Option number two, <laughs> no, because in some cases, like I go to some houses that don't have a system like yours where there's a computer sensing things, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just America's system is not cooling anymore and it's frozen, mm -hmm. right? And... You need some refrigerant to make right. it, make it not freeze up anymore. It was, so, it's not. no, it is correct. Okay. It isn't. It, it, you do yeah, need more more yeah, freon, the Puron. Yeah. You know, it's not freon. Your system uses Puron, but that at the end of the day, is what you need. But in some systems, it'll still run. It's just not going to do anything or cool efficiently mm -hmm. or effectively anymore. Right. So that's why option number one exists. Uh, option number two, we add the refrigerant that you need. Keep in mind, it's like a having a. What's going on right now is like having a nail or multiple nails in your car right. tire. You add, keep adding air to it, but until you actually they plug it or seal it or replace right. the tire, it's gonna keep going. Number three, we could add a sealant to the system. Um, your system is not new, new, but it's 10 years old almost. So it's a very, it's a very gray area. They're, they're designed to work, um, but there's no guarantee it will work. Right. The sealant that is, it's kind of like adding you know, back in the days, the car radiator would fail, and you, you know, yeah. the, the mechanic would add the radiator or sealant into it, and mm -hmm. you know, it it's travels throughout the whole system, and you know, it'll work maybe, but it's not, you know, good for a brand new car, for example. Right. You don't have a brand new car; you have a ten-year-old car, right. and its life expectancy, you know, and close to the ocean, you know, fifteen, twenty years. Okay. Number four, we look for the leak. It is very time-consuming. Yeah. And. And it's a needle in a haystack. You hit the nail on the head. You have three pieces of a puzzle, theoretically. We have an indoor unit, which has like a car radiator in it, right? We have an outdoor unit, similar, but much bigger. That's, that's why the unit's so big outside. And then you have the copper lines that go from point A to point B, right? The leak could be at, or leaks could be indoor unit, outdoor unit, or copper lines. Right, that's... Knowing, knowing the manufacturer that you have, um, you know, listen, any, no, no system is going to last forever. Some, like, listen, those from the 60s and 70s, there's, some of them are still chugging along, but most are not. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then again, anything man-made is subject to failure, yeah. and the um, you know, everything has a life expectancy to it. Mm -hmm. So we can look for a leak. It becomes time-consuming. But if you want to go that route, we add nitrogen to the system, and we add gauges, and then we, we wait. 24 hours, come back the next day or two days later and see where the pressure dropped. Yes. Number five, we replace the entire system. Which is what you would suggest. You would no, I'm not saying that. No. Uh, um, I yeah. would think that that's what. Uh, no, nah, not really. No. So what's the best option? I trust whatever you say. <sighs> okay. So right, technically speaking, the system is nine years old. Okay. Right, because we didn't put it. I think we put it in after Sandy, but it was like before the yeah. following uh, summertime. So I was like, I think that was 2013. Okay. So the system is nine years old. I am not suggesting replacing it at all. I'm just giving you the option. If you were to replace it, will you get more an efficient system? Absolutely. Will you have the same quality of air? Yes. Will you save much, a lot of money on electric bill? Not really. So it's, it still has a lot of, I think it still has a lot of life left into it. So what do I, you would, I would do one of two things. Number one, if it was my own house, and I've done yeah. this, so I, it's not like I'm just giving you the, the loaded answer, yeah. right? Because before I renovated my house, I was dumping pounds and pounds and pounds every year of refrigerant to my systems. I added a leak seal, which slowed it down a lot. But at the end of the day, I replaced it because that, that, it was just due for replacement. 
you have you know a more of an expensive system and it's not that time i personally if this is my house or even if it was a rental for example like because that's that's even better example right because that's you absolutely scraping the bottom of the barrel right i would i would add a refrigerant and add a sealant and have a nice day that's what i would do but i'm also in the business yeah all right but at the end of the day let's say we add this sealant and we top you off and let's say what happens it, if it doesn't work great great question so if a sealant doesn't work degrees at? if a sealant doesn't work the sealant also has an ultraviolet dye which is like a chemical it's in the system and when it leaks out we'll be able to see it so for example let's say it's leaking on the indoor unit we could we'll take a light and we would find a leak. And if, it, if it's in the indoor unit, we replace the entire coil, or like the car radiator. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's no other leaks, you replace the coil, have a nice day. But these replacements of the, those kind of components are in the thousands of dollars range. And, and a big component of it is the cost of refrigerant, which is 70, I think 77, yeah, no, so seven, everything. Do you know that for the, for the first, and I, I don't like to speak politics, but I think we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, Today, for the first time ever in my life, right? Mm -hmm. First time ever in my life, I filled up my truck, and it was over a hundred bucks. <gasps> it was it was a hundred and twenty. Oh it stopped God. at a hundred and twenty five dollars. That's unbelievable. For the first time in my life. Oh my God. Yep. This has saved me a fortune because I can't drive. I, <laughs> I the only time I have been out times I've been out since December tenth is when Jeffrey comes to take me to the doctor. Okay. So, yes, the refrigerant is $77 a pound. The labor, you know, you have a service contract, you don't pay for labor. But on the replacement of a coil, you would. Yeah. But a discounted rate, though. Instead of two twenty five an hour, you pay, one. I think, one fifty five an hour, one fifty. dollars I have to look it up. Because you've had, you, you're grandfathered in from the old school days. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... And the sealant is 175. So, will it work? You asked what I would do, that's what I would do. It went, when that does not work anymore, we look for the dye. And if we see the dye in the outdoor unit, unfortunately, I'm gonna tell you to replace the outdoor unit. Okay. If I see it in the indoor unit, I'm gonna tell you to replace the coil in the indoor unit. I say replace the whole outdoor unit because it's weathered, it's sitting oh, outside. It's, by the time we, it gets replaced, it may be a couple more years from now, but it just, it just get rid of it. And it is what it is. Right. If it's in the indoor unit, it's a coil. It's like a part. We could just take it out, put it back, put a new yeah. one in, and half a day later, it, it, your job is done. But that's yes, what I would do. That's what I would do. What should you do? Listen, if you have money to burn, replace the system. But I'm not taking your money. Yeah. And and and, and, it's, and that's really not. That's really not like what. How much would it be to replace the system? So the problem with yours is that your original system yeah. had, you know, you oh actually. The only thing, the only issue I have with your system is the voltage. Your system uses 110 volts, yeah. like um, like the outlet in, in the, 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 on the wall, wall outlet. Okay. Newer systems use 240 volts. Now, I already know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get the people, it's like, listen, Mike, that's exactly what I would have done. done. And there's gonna be others that are going to say something stupid and, and I am going to end up blocking them. At the end of the day, you give those five options, let the customer make up their mind. In this particular case, listen, she trusts me. I've been this, I've worked in this house for 10, over 10 years and I leave no stone unturned, but she trusts me and she asked me, what would I do? And that's exactly what I would do. I would just add the sealant, add the refrigerant, have a nice day. So let's go get that done. I got a brand new 25 pound container of 410A. There's the wrapper and hooked up to the hoses. We're going to open up the valve. Oh, I guess that was open. Okay, open up the valve and then we're gonna purge the air out. Okay. Good. oily there okay let's zero out our scale 
I'm just gonna dump a little bit into it with the system off while I'm waiting for a little. about a pound in there if it'll take it. Okay. It's definitely gonna take a pound, minimum. I'm, I'm, get, I'm wagering on two pounds actually. Let's have a little contest. I will give a brand new Pipe Doctor Flex Fit hat and the Let's Go Bosch summer t-shirt to the person who's closest without going over on how much pounds well, how much refrigerant the system is going to need to be properly charged to uh, 10 degrees of subcooling, right? Because right now it's 64 degrees. We could charge with subcooling. So the closest without going over to 10 degrees of subcooling, all right? Down in the comment section down below. Don't cheat. If you cheat, you're a loser. All right. Before I reveal how many pounds we took to get to 10 degrees of subcooling. There it is. There are the pressures. Okay. All right, I got that number in my head. Let's take a look at the total system charge. The amount of refrigerant that this unit came with. 146 ounces. 146 ounces, so a little under, what was that, nine pounds. Nine pounds total system charge. All right, we'll talk about how much I added in a minute, but I'm gonna say this. You need to have placed your vote in already. Okay, these are the yellow jacket, low loss hoses. Put the super seal. I'm gonna thread that on. I'm trying to do this one handed and it's not working. Alright, now I'm gonna take the other side, stick that there, and how I like to charge is we're gonna close this. Okay, I'll charge them. How I like to inject it, I'm gonna close my source, all right? And then I'm going to open my low side service port, all right? After disconnecting this, all right, so let's disconnect my high side. Again, I got the low loss fittings here, all right? So I have 102 PSI of refrigerant here, right? Now, I'm gonna open that side I'm going to open up this side, and you're going to see it dump into the suction side, the, the, the sealant, the dye. And again, the most amount of pressure I'm going to have here is 150 PSI, which is a little high. I don't know why that went up like that, but now we're good. So let's take off. Can't do it one-handed. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. And I always like to wear gloves and I keep a, a rag nearby in case I get any of that dye on me or in the system I can wipe it up. But as you can see here, the easy seal has been injected into the system. Now, if you guessed 4.7 pounds, you won a free Pipe Doctor Flex Fit hat and a brand new short sleeve Let's Go Bosch Pipe Doctor t-shirt. They're available in medium, large, and extra large only. Okay, so if you won <coughs> and you didn't cheat, email me a screenshot to Mike at MikeyPipes.com. Congratulations to the winner. Uh, another thing that I do for documentation purposes is that we are going to mark on the 410A container, how much I used. I don't have to put the date on that, this is 4.7. And also with my Sharpie on the inside cover, today's date, 4.7 pounds of 410A, the sealant with ultraviolet UV. Yes. Uh, what 
temperature would like to set to and what mode the thermostat. Don't, 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 wait a minute. Please remember, you're the only one who can fix it. No mode, just the way it is. Okay. So whatever I turn it on, it stays there. Okay. What temperature would you like it set to? Seventy, please. Okay. Seventy, it is. Thank you. Get the hold. Okay. Oh, what? You get old? Why? Hold the temperature there. No, I don't want to. You said you want to keep it at 70 degrees. Not all the time. Oh, okay. Unhold it, please. Okay. You fixed it last time somebody came, they screwed it up, and you came, and you're the only one who can fix it. So whatever temperature you know, there are, there are, there are, there are, whatever temperature you put it on, so you'll it's manually changing. change the temperature, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need to press hold. Okay. You just adjust the temperature. And it'll stay there? It won't just... As long as you adjust the temperature, it's going to stay there. Okay. Okay, that's what hold is for. It'll hold the temperature of what you set it to indefinitely. That's what that means. And now if I put it on 68? It'll stay at 68 until you change it again. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, we added... Uh, 80 gallons. <laughs> <laughs> of diesel. <laughs> and then 110 more. Yes. What do we <laughs> I added the sealant. I added 4.7 pounds. The total system charge is roughly 10 pounds. So it's, Ooh. yeah. So it's a big leak. We'll see. We'll see. If it's a, if it's a small leak, then the sealant will probably work. But, okay, the only way to permanently make it go away is re make a repair or replace the component that's leaking. But even then, like, eventually something else will leak. So it's just, right. it is what it is. But just keep that in mind. You know, it's just, we'll see. That it's a ticking time bomb. Uh, yes, correct. <laughs> All right, so we finished up that service call. Spent about an hour, hour and ten there altogether. Uh, got him up and running. I am a little disappointed that it needed 4.7 pounds of R410A. Um, that's a considerable amount of the total system charge. So. I am not confident 100% that I will not be back here this season to address this issue again. I have a funny feeling that we will be back here again this season to address the uh, L21 issue because I think it's that's significant. That's significant. But as you hear me, as you heard me explain to the homeowner, gave me options. And then she asked, like, listen, I don't want to be, you know, go out on a hot day. And I said, listen, worst case scenario, I'll fill you back up with some 410A again and you'll be good again. You know, until the leak gets significantly worse. So, we'll see. I'm shooting myself in the foot for asking this, but let me get your feedback down in the comments section down below. I know that a lot of you would have taken this approach. And I also know that a lot of you also would have taken the time and looked for the leak and then fixing the leak and making the repair or replace a component. And as you heard the as you heard the conversation with the homeowner, I could have I could have pushed option number 5 if I really wanted to, but that's not really that's not, in my opinion that's not ethical. I think that system has a lot more life into it. Until the compressor is dead, we can always replace components on that system. So, that being said, let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If this is the first time watching my channel, watching a video on my channel, if you found this somewhat entertaining and or educational, and you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and that alarm bell to get post notifications. I try to drop a video at least five, six days a week, Monday through Friday, because I believe in promoting great professional business practices as how I operate as an HVAC and plumbing contractor owner. Thank you so much for watching. Be well. God bless. Stay safe. If you're not calling Mikey Pipes, you're getting screwed. There you go. That's right.